Drugs are addictive, but drug dealers don't care as long as they're making their profit. But is it possible to go from drug user to drug survivor to winner? Well, one man says it is. As drug dealers get richer off the proceeds of their crime, they leave a trail of addicts and victims in their wake. And the reality is that whole communities are left in ruin, as the victims of their illicit trade often turn to crime to fund their habit. Two. Ja. You wouldn't know ja. from looking at him now, but Jamie Stewart's addiction to the synthetic drug monkey dust almost ruined his life. Good, backhands. Good. One. As a kid, it was kind of a rough upbringing. There was uh, a lot of crime going on around that way, and thefts, violence. We were always falling out with someone. Drugs and stuff, like, it's always been a big issue that way. Having been surrounded by drugs and crime from a young age, it wasn't long before Jamie started getting in trouble with the police. As kids, we were all getting up to mischief, but uh, I think the first time I got in trouble with the police, I was about 13. Jamie's been to prison nine times for a variety of different crimes. I've been for burglary, dashing of drugs, an aggravated vehicle taking, which I served three years for. It took me 19th, me 20th, and me 21st birthday from me that did. After several stints in prison and with a growing reputation locally as a troublemaker, Jamie tried monkey dust for the first time. That was the worst mistake I ever made in my life. From the first go, that was it. You're gone. Monkey dust is a dangerous synthetic drug that has made its way onto UK streets from overseas. Most commonly found in powder form, it is relatively cheap to buy, highly addictive, and causes hallucinations and psychosis. And while monkey dust dealers are making a fortune to spend on luxury items, users quickly find themselves in a dangerous downward spiral. You'll feel like Superman for a couple hours, but then, like, you get the urge that you need more to keep that feeling up. And then, at first, it'll be like, oh, yeah, you can have a go every couple hours. But then it's like every hour, every half an hour, every 10 minutes. You won't sleep for weeks. You won't eat. It changes your personality. Every day when I was on it, I wanted it. And if you didn't have it, you'd do anything, get it. Monkey dust is a man-made drug, and its composition can vary according to where it's made and who's making it. A dramatic increase in monkey dust addicts in Stoke-on-Trent and nearby Stafford has led police and locals to describe it as an epidemic. He is that addictive if you will literally do anything to keep that around you, to be around it. Noreen Oliver is the founder of addiction treatment centres across Staffordshire. And whilst drug dealers are making money from monkey dust, she's helping the people who have fallen into its trap. There's a number of states that it can be. You can have the lethargic state where they're walking around like zombies. And then they'll sort of wake and become paranoid. Um, believing they can do anything whatsoever and that people are out to get them. And then, of course, you've got the danger to self, um, jumping off buildings, um, you know, and, and obviously the danger of attacking other people. Noreen runs a drug and alcohol rehabilitation programme and sees increasing numbers of monkey dust users seeking help. But because of the unpredictable nature of the drug, it can be hard to offer support. It's very hard to detox somebody off one of these synthetic drugs. So you're dealing with the person coming down without any um, medical support, really. The negative effects are huge. You know, um, in terms of people developing psychosis, um, having psychotic episodes, uh, ending up with mental health problems. So the main danger is psychologically. 
and what is going on in the brain. She's keen to encourage anything that helps people off the drug, but there aren't many options due to its power. Because there isn't a known detox for monkey dust, um, that makes life very, very difficult in terms of coming off. Luckily for Jamie, his family intervened at a crucial stage. I realised I'd gone far by, by how my family were reacting because I was constantly on this drug. It was like, like my mum was doing any, everything to, like, to get me locked up, just to get me away from everyone around it, and it worked. Jamie's mum took the drastic step of getting her son arrested. And it was during this final stint in prison that Jamie was able to kick his habit. That was the best thing she'd ever done for me as growing up for mum. She saved me from myself. That was my turning point. Finally, out of prison and with a more positive outlook, Jamie found that boxing helped him to regain focus. I got out and I was just missing the adrenaline, like the rush. And that's where I kind of like found boxing. This makes me want to get out of bed in the morning. It gave me that rush that I was looking for. This teaches you discipline. It's like cheap therapy, basically, and it works. Money seized from criminals using the Proceeds of Crime Act has been invested in boxing clubs in a huge number of UK towns and cities. There could be one near you. I think it's fair to say that it's a good thing that people are taking this money from them and they're putting it back into the community. I say, yeah, that's a good thing. It's a great diversion for youngsters and grown-ups alike. And having realised the redemptive nature of the sport, Jamie has become a regular fixture at his local boxing gym, run by trainer Scott. Go on, again. Jamie just turned up at the gym, says, uh, I've heard you looking for someone to box on a show uh, at the weekend. Uh, I'm up for it, uh, I want to do it. I said to him, listen, this kid's quite good. Who, 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 who they after? And uh, he said, no, nah, so no worries, I, I want to box, I want to box. And uh, took the fight. And then since that day, he's in the gym, non-stop all the time. And whilst the drug dealers are still getting rich off the back of monkey dust, Jamie is one individual who proves you can turn your life around after the drug. And it's not just his boxing that's improved. It's actually changed my whole personality. When I started this gym, I wouldn't speak to no one. And over the time of being here, now I speak full conversation. You probably can't get me shut up now. So it's actually changed me whole me as a person. And with his pro boxing license approved, Jamie now has his sights set even higher. Well, I've just had my first professional fight, and uh, I smashed it, to be honest. I'm looking to go for the Midland Derby title. <laughs> maybe the end of next year. He's definitely got the ability to win Middles Area titles, and it's just a matter of uh, luck and timing, but ability-wise, he's definitely there, yeah. And whether he wins the Midlands Area title or not, Jamie has already won his hardest battle, getting off monkey dust. I'm quite lucky I'm not on the path I used to be. If it weren't for boxing back in a few times, there could have been a, a hiccup here and there, but... This has been the thought of my life out for me.